and it don't like that bit sliding on. Lovely bit of harmonics. About three and a half, four thousand. Where? What I've just done it is I'm now comparing that ground face with the machined faces, which are unworn under the headstock, and there is basically two divisions difference in in square, which to me means it's uh, that's a thou in ten inches, so it's, it is quite a bit out between the ground faces and the original uh, plain faces um, which explains why I couldn't get a, a consistent reading to make it square and it's because it was obviously a different setup um, just for completeness I've also checked the square of that um, face which is the quick gear box change to the mounting face for the free end of the lead screws uh, they're square um, I, I can't see a noticeable difference in in a half thou per 10 inch measurement so I'm pretty confident that the bed itself hasn't twisted at all um, and that gives me confidence to sort of move on to the next phase so where I'm at now is I've assessed the degree of wear on there and I've got a rough idea where that is so I can now use a straight edge print it and take it squ flat square down and what I'm looking to do is maintain that dimension to match the same one at the other end um, so that I don't introduce uh, sinking at the tail stock or sinking at the headstock that will give me then a datum from which I can then work to start looking at the other um, bearing surfaces. Uh, one of the points Chris has uh, raised is when we've got the bed on for the headstock, which is after we've trued up the bed, we get that to sit on. Um, we know that the bearing sleeves, uh, which are white metal, are uh, pretty badly worn sort of think in the region of 30 thou worth of vertical lift at the chuck um, so in order to get the bearing scraped in we need a um, test bar the end of the spindle which is there takes a sleeve and then goes that sleeve has then got a, th a three morse taper down the middle of it now I've got neither a test bar nor the sleeve uh, I've asked the question on the Holbrook Owners Club forum on Yahoo, which I'll put a link to at the bottom of this if I remember, if anybody's got one that I can beg, beg borrow, steal or copy, and uh, pretty much told you're better off making it up for yourself, which wouldn't be a problem if I'd got the lathe up and running. Um, that uh, spindle's far too big for me to fit into there and hold it on a fixed steady and then turn a plug to fit so I've got to come up with some convoluted way of making up a sleeve which has got um, a bespoke taper on the outside and then a morse taper on the inside running perfectly concentric so I, whatever, however I do it I've got to do it on uh, between centers so that then means I've got to make up a center um, shaft with a morse taper three at one end part well, it's a part wide down and then make a plug with a morse taper three stick that on the scent between centers and on that shaft and then turn the outside um taper to fit the mandrel sleeve yeah mandrel head spindle head yeah a lot of opportunity for things to get cocked up on that so uh, yeah that'll be a later episode Alrighty, well i've uh 
uh, put it off for long enough. I'm ready to start scraping the uh, the lathe bed. Plan is to do this this way first, um, and rather than trying to hump the uh, six in, six foot uh, straight edge up and then balance it on what's an inch and a quarter away, I'll use a slightly smaller one, which is uh, I think it's three inches small shorter than the overall length. Um, but I'm going to start at this end, bring it down until I get a steady print, and then bring down that end, keeping in mind the dimension I've measured between that surface and that surface, and I want that even all the way down. Um, so if I can get a print and it's the same all the way down, but I can't get that measurement the same, it means I've I've tipped, I've either dived or gone up a slope. I want to try and keep that as even as I can. If I get it even at each end and a print all the way down, so that dimension is the same either end, but I've got a discrepancy somewhere in that wear section, it means that the underside surface is worn. Now I, I can't feel it with a tooth out feeler gauge, so I know that the wear is less than that, and I suspect it's less than a thou. But I'll worry about that once I get down something like so long story short um if we take 236 as the number i've got 236 236 and then it finishes at 236 there and it's below 236 and it goes basically 2355 235 234 233 and a half 233 233 233 233 232 and a half 232 and a half uh, back up to 233, 235, 234, sorry, 2335, 234. So the worst of the wear is in this section. Um, to put that into context, the chucks, uh, the, the headstock finishes here. Judging by the dints, that's where the front of the chuck comes, somewhere there. So the wear is all 18 inches in front of that. So it's just as you expect. It's not a long bed, so... Uh, there's no other issues I worry about at this stage. Uh, made myself up a nice little scraper to take a Sandvik, uh, 30 mil wide Sandvik blade, which I picked up on eBay. Somebody was selling it off. Still cost me 25 quid, which is like half a kidney for what it is, but uh, it does seem to last a bit longer, so I'm going to give it a go. Um, yeah, right. I'll bring you back when we've done the first pass. So I just completed uh, was it three, four blind cycles. So I'm not I'm not printing it. I'm just taking this surface down progressively. So it's a kind of scra step scraping, but from here to about here is all the same thickness. So I've took two thou off that and then extended it forward to here and took another thou off all of it. So I'm now coming in at uh, 233 to 233 and a half thou, that, you know, one, one inch, 233. So it's half a thou out. And uh, the lowest points here, which is 232 and a half. So I'm, I'm down to within um, a thou, let's call it. So I'm gonna go over that. I've, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm roughing it over and then uh, giving it a heavy stoning over with a diamond stone uh, that just shifts the material so you can see the bits between the between the different directions so let's tuck it down pretty quick um, this score in here is, feels a couple of thou deep so I suspect it's all going to come down a bit once I uh, get it flat end to end but the idea is to get it all down to 233 which is near enough there now um we'll then do the same that end um and then start printing it so when I'm, I'm printing it i've only got a few cycles rather than a couple of dozen just saves on the uh the workload humping the uh straight edge backwards and forwards well that's took 20 minutes and uh it's got it down to it's, it's all now according to that measurement within a thou and a half end to end 
I've not touched the lowest spots. So now what I can start looking at is printing it. Um, because as you, as I'm scraping down on these, there are some spots that are measuring there the same as the measuring around the lowest points here. So I don't want to keep working blind, I want to now start working to a print. So we'll clean off the straight edge and get some ink on it and then uh, get a first rub. Scrape is working nicely, feels comfortable. You'll have to excuse the skew with angle. So that's the first print. Um, bring you down. So the ends were high by three and a half were high by three and a half thou in relation to this area um, what i've done is i've step scraped them out working from each end and the difference between we find a that blue area there and the lowest point along here is now a thou and a quarter and the same along here so uh, that's took two hours, and it's took down the uh, you know total total variations a thou and a quarter, which is encouraging. I've just uh, swapped the cutting tip round using fresh face, and it's just. Not scraping butter when you got a nice sharp tip. These are like uh, just after roughing it down. I'm sort of refining the edge, but I'm not looking at increasing the points per inch. Just getting a smooth finish. Getting rid of any chatter or scraping, you know, scratch marks. Although there's a couple of deep scores from where the saddles had some grip running in it. From my discussions with uh, Chris, he's uh, it is a completely different approach to the sort of scraping um, more commonly put out there, where every scrape is you're supposed to be digging a hole for oil. Um, Chris's words were, when you when you finish the the bearing face. It's as smooth as a, a ground face, ground finish. And that's before you go on to do the oil pocketing. Um, now I know there's a, a lot of guys that disagree with that, uh, you know, whether it's good or bad. I'm not really bothered, but there's an awful lot of machines out there, this one included, which had ground faces. And then the saddle would have been scraped and then flaked for oil pockets. And it was uh, no fancy oiling system, it was just flooded with oil. This is the worst part of the bed on this, this bearing face, or lowest I should say. So I'm not scraping deep pockets, I'm just taking off the surface.
what I am finding is the A, the scraper's uh, tips 30mm wide and as I'm coming off the end I'm dunking that uh, prism which is uh, annoying I could go along and stick some tape over it but as that's got to be scraped yet a little row of tiny holes I'm putting in it ain't going to be an issue I'm wondering what to do about this area here. It's been had some blunt trauma over the years. <laughs> it ain't gonna scrape out, that's for sure. I could actually just remove that section, take it down, because it's a tailstock V-way, but I'm loath to do that. Aside from it's been an awful lot of work. Bring it back when I've completed this run. We went out of shot. So this is the uh, the print just after that cycle. Now I've not printed from the red this way. It's hinging about an inch outside at each end of where it wants to be hinging, so I can know that the ends are still. A little high. I mean, you can see it on that rub there. Um, what I'm wondering about is, can you see these? There's a good shot of it. I'm wondering whether I should be taking it down below that level. Um, they fade out from about here, which would suggest they're uh, at least two thou deep in the middle um, that would give me uh, three four five getting on for six thou of material that's come off each end and around two to three in the middle uh, what i wanted to do was take off the minimum amount not least because of the amount of work involved but uh, my understanding is that's what you aim to do take off the least amount to leave uh, room for the next re-scrape <laughs> <laughs> yeah right anyway we're getting there. I'm just. I've, I've checked this dimension, and I can't. It, it might. There might be a couple of tenths variation. So I'm now going to stick my one, two, three blocks and measure down and check that dimension. That will determine whether I've got this thing um, in the same plane that it was, or tilted that way or that way across the width. Just a quick word, the um, the one, two, three block, of which I got a pair, and the uh, depth mic, both came in my toolbox from Keith Fenner um, for the What's in the Box competition or giveaway. Uh, and thanks to, I, I, I need to go back through the video and find out who actually donated these, but um, to the two gents that did, thank you very much. They get used. Well, this one quite frequently. Uh, the one, two, three block. Uh, when I need it, it's the only pair I've got, and they're dead handy. So I've gone down and taken about a dozen readings all the way down, and I can't determine anything more than quarter of a thou. Um, if anything, it's it's slightly low at this near edge, more you know, than it was. But I, ne I never measured it to within that kind of tolerance. When I did it originally, um, so you know it's it ain't tilted over. I'm happy to say. That's uh, five hours in. It's uh, it's flat and it's in the right plane. Uh, I've taken it down 
by the lowest point is now a thou and a half below where it started which means the highest points are roughly five thou down um, what I've been trying to do is get down below these scores and the truth of the matter is I am reluctant to take it down any further so I'm going to clean up the surface now um, get a more even print it's a little bit high on this end about a quarter of a thou bring in the far end and then uh, go and have a read of my notes and find out which uh, surface we're doing after that well I'm happy to say that that surface is now scraped in and ready to go uh, it's not in its final uh, points per inch but it's good enough to take references off uh, I've then measured how much I've taken off verified that I actually read the micrometer wrong in the first place on several occasions uh, I've rechecked all that and I've took off five and a half thou there um, I've added, I've ver confirmed that by using the original spirit level setting which I had leveled up um, made up an adjustable parallel to compensate for what I've taken off and brought it back into parallel and it measures up five and a half thou with uh, the same mic uh, the adjustable parallels are from Keith Fenner's what's in your box comp and um, thanks to whoever donated those they are very handy right, it's the next day and uh, before I move on to scraping this next way I wanted just to verify that bearing surface was a flat true plane because it was showing a little bit lighter in the middle than the ends so what I've done is I've set up the uh, spirit level uh, on a pair of gauge block uh, on a pair of 321 blocks uh, under the feet the reason being that the foot on my spirit level is trying to balance on the extreme edges of this surface um, which is not giving me a true reading um, it was all over the shop anyway putting it on on the one two three blocks and then setting basically one on the end here and one here so my starting position is the bubble is two full stops short of perfectly true perfectly flat level i should say and then shuffling the thing along so that, that foot then moves into this position and taking the next reading and unless the bubble position is moved everything comes out as zero so that section showing zero from this position then to this position so we're now into the wear thing so if there was any wear left on this bed section here i.e. that i've not scraped that down to it would um, basically drop this foot uh, i think <laughs> anyway i'm showing point two of a, div of a division and one division is uh, five tenths or half a thou so if you like it's uh, 20 percent of half a thou call it call it a tenth two tenths and then i've got another drop again sorry then i've got a reversal of that so basically in this section here i've still got something in the region of two tenths worth of wear that i've not taken out um and there's a little bit jiggery pokery on the end here uh whereas there's still two tenths so i'm going to go over and refine it again and keep doing prints on it but making the prints lighter and lighter so if you look that's the kind of surface we've got so i'm just tweaking it now i want to get it so i'm happy with it before i move on to the next bit and otherwise i'm just carrying one error over to another spot and that's the next position along so i said that they are actually all the same so any variation on it is pretty bloody small I'm going to go back and just check the last few again as well because I know there's something going on at this end which is not surprising because it's the last three inches of the print
what's the saying measure three times don't cut it and then measure it a fourth and then cut it and then curse because you cut the wrong bit this is a bit of a test uh, based on some comments Robin Ranzetti's made on the, uh, the last post so on the same indicator I've leveled it out and I'm stood next to the lathe now I'm going to walk to the far end of the lathe and video see whether the bubble moves can you hear me now so I'm now at the other end of the lathe I'm now going to actually stand on the pedestal of the lathe And I'll come back and check the video. It's not easy trying to record it, but basically you could see there the bubble would move half a division with me stood actually on with my feet on the base of the pedestal up there. Which was for intents and purposes, if one division is half a thou, my 15 stone, which is what? Uh, uh, I don't know, 98 kilos, call it 100 kilos clothed, stood on the end, shifts that end down by around about two and a half tenths. Now I'm not standing on it when I'm doing doing my measurements, but it, Robin's you know quite right, it, it does make an effect, but what I was more concerned about was A, the weight of the spirit level moving down. So I'm going to do the same exercise now, but by sticking a two kilogram block of steel on the end. So same exercise now, but shifting a two or two and a half kilo block of uh, steel. So that's zero, that's that's where it's at. Block of steel on the far end of the lathe. I've not got it actually on the on the um, bearing face because it won't fit, but uh, it's sat straddling. I don't see that that bubble's moved. So I'm happy that uh, the weight of the the rig here isn't affecting the reading on the spirit level with the way the lathe set up. But it is a point you need to bear in mind, I'm sure. So I'm just doing the second set, no, third set of measurements for this next uh, surface. Initially, I'd set it up and done the uh, spirit level across, and then using a well, basically reading off the scale of it once I got it levelled at that end um, I've written on the, the difference and there's around about, about two and a half thou roughly of wear what I'm doing now is using the uh, the Kingway sled type variant thing and it takes a bit of getting your head round you've, you've got two points of contact here so that that foot can tilt on the face and single point of contact here in terms of the ball foot which allows for basically movement in all directions um, and then I've got the as a result of the comments from I think it's Alex King um, Richard King's son um, he suggested you have the uh, DTI point as far in front as you can now I could really probably get away with another six or eight inches in front but I haven't got a, a, a support arm made up for that yet so I'm getting a reading um, and it's not hugely dissimilar from what I'd got with the spirit level which is basically the purpose of doing the, the exercise measure everything with at least two different methods but as as if that if that goes along and now a flat surface that means that the variation has to be on under the foot going up and down yeah so if the foot drops it should make this surface appear to be coming up so it'd be a positive reading whereas in fact it's actually a negative <laughs> just getting your head around it all um it's not an easy thing to film and the vibrations drive me mad. I should have made the whole thing three times as heavy weight. You're in the wear area now. 
and obviously the needles bouncing around because of all the dents and whatever but I haven't got enough pairs of hands to stick another block under the but I would imagine somebody with a well a better rig than I've got and more experience using it can actually get some bloody good measurements off it it's a handy little device Anyway, what it's proving to me is that my spirit level setup measuring across is not too far out uh, so in combination with a um, straight edge print and then spirit level from that end and this end and for good measure one in the middle to make sure that the this face and that face are in line coplanar i believe is the term i waffle on another jaunty angle shot um, we're now in the same plane certainly within uh, two tenths using the spirit level across at both ends so that last three inches of each end because they're now in the same plane I can drop the straight edge on and then literally just scrape down straight which tends to speed things up a little bit so I can take a deeper cut whereas what I've been doing to get it to get this end dropped is taking a heavier cut per pass and lighter cut this end just so it catches up there's probably a more effective method but it works for me um, I don't know whether you can tell whether they come out but you can see these polished areas as I um, take a deep scrape across before I, uh, I dust it off with the brush sweep the chips off and then I'm going over it with that uh, DMT diamond stone and leaning on it a bit uh, what it does is it just takes out some of the um, if you like the, the, the small small peaks between a trough and another trough of a scrape so it's just taking that off it's all helping move re remove material uh, and then every now and again I have to go along and just knock the corners off here yeah it's coming in all, coming along okay still got uh, a couple of thou to drop it down to get to this thing well I've just remapped it again using the spirit level across the width uh, they're in three inch in increments so that position if I take as level we come down and these are units of uh, half a thou so that's a third of half a thou that's one and a half lots of half a thou so if you like that's uh, 0 0.75 0 0.75 0 0.75 so that's flat but 0.75 below that point then we get up to a thou thou and a half uh, a thou, thou and a half, and that's basically the trauma around the uh, the dints that were there. So r roughly, roughly from around here to here, we're about a thou and a half lower hit on this side than that side in relation to that end, which we know is true. And then moving up here, we've got the lowest point, which is just under two thou. And then it's a rapid climb up. So for all intents and purposes, when the tail stock's been here, it's shoved forward, dives down, got no oil under it, grinds a bit out, then rides up. And then this is just the general wear. So I am going to set about it and do a step scrape. Uh, I know that the last three inches here, across is exactly the same plane as that end and this thing's basically got a belly deeper at this point then up and then right up so i'm going to step scrape it now um and i'll start at that end do a pass from from here then from there and then from there working on the basis of uh, i'll probably do so two or three cycles through each each position to take me down roughly half a thou each time i shall video it because you've seen plenty of scraping and uh, 
I'm no expert, but it's uh, I'm trying to explain my thought processes. Um, so yeah, there we go. Hey. Bit of a late start today because uh, we've been out in the snow. Right, so this section I've got a step scrape, so I've got to go from here to here. There and back, there and back, there and back four times, and then another two to there, and then another two to there. And this scrape is absolutely bloody freezing. We're trying to take about two two thou out of the length at its worst. Just broke my uh, stoning uh, slip stone, which is annoying. Uh, it comes from having cold hands in a cold workshop. It slipped out and fell off the end and broke it out. Fortunately, my reflexes aren't that good after I'm tired. Anyway, um, thought I'd just have a few words about um, using these spirit levels. Now, this isn't something I've learnt from attending any courses or any particular dialogue it's snippets of bits I've picked up and more recently conversation on Instagram uh, which was instigated by Robin Renzetti um, where he asked if I was seeing any variation in the levels as I moved the spirit level down the way and as I moved down the way 
So I set up a little test and recorded it and put it up on Instagram. Um, the point he makes is these things are subject to an awful lot of other things which are going to be outside of your own control. Most least of which is the, uh, no, not least of which is the uh, sort of distribution of weight um, of that apparatus and yourself on the substrate. Now I'm fortunate that I've got a quite a solid concrete floor reinforced sat on a dirty great big thick I think it's 12 inches of uh, hardcore but there's also somewhere underneath this section of the floor about a third in there's the remains of what I can only assume was a brick shit house and when we were digging the foundations for this place uh, I was originally going to put some a, a, quite a big void underneath it for storage and we were digging down the side of these foundations and we got down to the full depth that the bucket could reach to on the mini digger which was I think eight feet and we still hadn't reached the bottom of these uh, this brick foundation so we decided to change the plan and basically backfilled everything with hardcore and rubble brought it back up and then cast a concrete base over the top so if you like I mean my workshops I think it's six and a half meters internally um so you've got roughly two and a bit meters then you've got this under to say this foundation which the concrete slabs actually sat on as well as as well as the hardcore so everything that side of it is sort of a minimum of 12 inches of uh sort of noggin sized uh limestone uh, nodules and then um MOT over the top, screen it off, then it's got a vis screen, then sand and all the rest of it. And then there's at least four inches of um, structural concrete with uh, reinforcing bars through it. On top of which is then the workshop, which is all stone and um, concrete block, stone on the outside. And the roofing is a it's imitation stone, but it's basically concrete flags. So there's quite a bit of mass just sat on the workshop floor. Inside the workshop, you've then got various bits of kit. So there's a ton and a half of a shaper, a ton and a half of a miller, three quarters of a ton of a surface grinder, a couple of hundred kilos for a lathe, wood turning lathe, plainer thickness of the thing. So there's five, four or five tons worth of machinery, and then you've got everything else in there. Then the lathe bed itself is a ton. I think it's a twelve or fourteen hundred kilos in its current setup my mass is out of around 100 kilos so me moving around the floor on this because of the overall mass of everything i don't think is making a great deal of difference i certainly can't see anything on the spirit level um another gent put in that it's more there's more likely to be a, an influence with changes in moisture of the substrate underneath the bed of the workshop i ground heave with moisture movement that may be a, may be a, uh, an issue, um, but you're likely to see the changes in that over, I would have thought, days rather than minutes. So what I am working on is on the basis of all, all the measurements I do are comparative measurements to different points. None of them are absolute. So uh, if I'm taking this as my datum, yeah, and then I'll take the next reading up there. There isn't going to be a great deal of movement in anything over that time scale if it takes me two minutes to set it all up. But I have to be consistent. So what I've got, I've got two flatways, one with a V against it. So my 321 block is pushed up against that V to give me a consistent datum there. So it's consistently the same height off that at the same position. I've then got, I think it's a 3,000 feeling gauge under there. And I'm making sure the feeling gauge is all up, always up against the same edge. I'm making sure that this face of the spirit level is level with the end of the 1, 2, 3 block and level with the end of the bed. This 1, 2, 3 block, same orientation. It's I've tried to even it out so that the overhang each side of the scraped surface is even the end of its level with this end of the lathe and the spirit level is level with the end of that so i can set that up every time 
it takes a couple of minutes but every time it means I'm getting a consistent reading to see what's changing now if you look at that that's near as damn it level and the level the fact that it's level doesn't matter it could be three divisions that way or three divisions that way all I'm interested in is that position as it relates to that position and then obviously if I wanted to take intermediate positions because what I'm trying to do is get this way co-planar with that way uh, I'm about uh, just under half a thou out I think that ends high but I need to check it again but it was just a bit of waffle to sort of explain my my understanding of it it's probably a long way short of where it should be but as far as I'm concerned I'd rather have a consistently wrong measurement and be comparing it with another consistently wrong measurement as long as the error is going to be the same because of the consistent approach um, I'm prepared to be shot down but there you go I've not got to make this fit anybody else's it's only got to fit itself just to verify where I was at I've reset it up this end because I didn't remember bump, bumping this block up to the V so the reading is actually probably a couple of tenths out if that and uh, that end is lower so it's this end that's going to come down a couple of tenths so I'll just lean on the scraper a little harder well, that's why you always double check any errors right new day um, we've just been along and verified all the measurements um, just to make sure nothing's shifted and uh, it's going to bite us in the arse later so the first job was to go along the far side which was the original datum and check it with a level to make sure there's no variation along there that we're unhappy with best i can find or maximum find is around about the last two inches of it there seems to be a, a couple of tenths rise i'm not overly fussed about it um so then the next job was to repeat the cross measurements with the bubble and the figures along here uh both ends are showing um an even number let's call it 10 then we drop by a division which is half a thou meaning that this position here is half a thou lower than that position that and that are the same which i know because this is the overlap that i haven't thoroughly scraped down yet so you got we've got somewhere in the region of half a thou there and then all the way along the rest of it we've got something in the region of the same the odd blip a sort of quarter of a division which is a couple of tenths two and a half tenths a couple of tenths uh, and then back up climbing on this section so it looks uh, as if uh, everything's going according to plan um, and it's just a case of checking that nothing goes out of plonk so if I match the ends up with a straight plane I'm still co-planar with the far side but I've got um, to bring it bring the ends down a touch and basically bring them down by the same amount to remain co-planar yeah it's a lot of measurements that lot took took about an hour allowing a few minutes for each uh, dimension just for the bubble to settle start scratching away at it again now <laughs> 